Mother. Everything all right? Yeah, I just got something to tell you, that's all. What? Caitlin's pregnant. That's so mean. <laughs> that's so mean. Are you going to be a grandmother? No, no. No, oh. no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. She's pregnant, but she's doing... She's been a surrogate for somebody else. You are? <laughs> <laughs> Would you get pregnant for someone else? and agree to give the baby away? I'm 26 years old, and I'm having a baby for my boss. Across Britain, the number of young women choosing to have other people's babies is rising. Mm -hmm. If you take the mm -hmm. risk to get pregnant, mm -hmm. you've got to take what's coming, haven't you? <laughs> in most countries in Europe, surrogacy is banned, but in Britain it's legal, as long as you do it for free. People are like, what? How could you do that without getting paid for it? The demand for fertile women is so high that there are now apps and agencies connecting surrogates with people desperate to have children. I think it's probably the biggest decision that you could possibly make. In this series, we follow five of these extraordinary women as they face the emotional sacrifices. Nothing there. It's quite a lot of putting a brave face on. And physical dangers. I could die during this pregnancy of having someone else's baby. There is no doubt that I am officially addicted to surrogacy. Oh! is 12 weeks pregnant. She's carrying a baby for Kate, who is her boss at work. Caitlin lives with her two children from a previous relationship and Jordan, her boyfriend of one year. Caitlin has been a surrogate <laughs> for somebody else. You've been a surrogate? Yeah. Are you lying? No, I'm telling the truth. Why are you thinking of being a surrogate? Because her boss and her partner have struggled to have a baby. But how do you feel about that, then? I'm laid back, and I? I'm just seeing what Caitlin's like pregnant. And then if, if, if I can deal with her, then maybe we'll try for one. Well, because you're all right with it. I think that's a lovely thing for her to do. Yeah, keep her now, isn't she? As long as she's going to be able to deal with it. Yeah, well, it's we now, isn't it? So we'll deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> Eat with your fingers, be a savage. Mm, nice. Yeah. Jordan is wonderful with the kids. He has such a good relationship with them. Hands in yeah. the air like you just don't care. Hey. <laughs> you got that done as well? I haven't seen that. When we first got together, I'd been in a bad relationship and been in quite a bleak sort of place. And he suddenly came along and wanted to do fun stuff. We'd go out on trips, we'd have a few drinks. I felt like I was redoing a lot of things that I'd maybe missed doing because I'd had the baby so young. Yeah, I'm definitely in love. How's Jordan coped with it all? Really good. When I told him I was going to do it, he was just like, yeah, like, what, in the end, like, what's a year? Like, if we're going to be together forever, like, this is no, yeah, no time at absolutely. all. Absolutely. Caitlin and Kate live on Alderney in the Channel Islands. Tonight, they're meeting some mutual friends for dinner. It's got to be difficult, though, because it's a fairly new relationship, isn't it? So, for you guys, I have that pressure, and then, obviously, you have morning sickness and stuff like that, and for him to have to deal with that, because he's... Has he ever been around pregnant people? No. No, like, I've tried to get him to touch my belly a couple of times this week, and he's like, oh, OK, yeah, I really want to. Oh, no, I'm not sure if I want to feel it. What about emotions? Do you worry that you might feel emotionally attached? I guess I'm trying to be very aware that I probably will feel like that immediately after the birth. The best thing, if it's at all possible, is um, to literally just take the baby and me to have nothing to do with it at all. From my experience of having my babies, I know how insanely possessive I was of them, how I struggled to even let you know, my mum, their grandparent, pushed the pram without feeling like they were going away from me. You're going to have that rush of hormones. Your body thinks it's supposed to nourish this baby. I'd rather just have, like, a very clear separation time afterwards and then once that's settled down, be able to sort of go back and visit with none of that going on.
As long as I've been aware that surrogates exist, I've always been interested by it. My ultimate dream is just to be useful to someone that really desperately wants their own child and can't do it without some help. Hello! Hi! Hi! You're right. Should we go and have a cup of tea? Yeah, yeah. Come please. And see, I think. Maddie first met Alex and Rich four months ago at a surrogacy event, and they have created a team to make a baby together. How are the kids? They are fine. They're very excited, and they've requested T-shirts. Well, we can get T-shirts. I said, we'll look at them yeah. this weekend. And yeah, then they yeah. said, why are we in a team? Are we in a competition with another team? Are there going to be other teams there? <laughs> and I was like, no, it's not that type of team. We're using Richard's sperm and my egg. So if we make a baby, it will be half my DNA. Although Maddie has two children of her own, this is the first time she's planning to give her biological child away to someone else. To help the trio agree on the terms of the arrangement, they are meeting with Michelle, an advisor from an organisation called Surrogacy UK. The key thing about the agreement is that everyone is on the same page. Your relationship has to be strong because it can be quite an emotional time. Like any anyone trying for a baby, you don't get always get pregnant first time. Breakdowns in communication are quite often cause for concern, or just the whole reality of when a couple gets pregnant and they kind of realise that they are actually going to have a child. But you have to cover all eventualities just in case, because things do happen. Michelle's here now. Ah. I'll go and let her in. How are you doing? All right, how are you? Yeah, good. Where do we go? So, inseminations, who will be present? Everyone. Uh, everyone. Um, you agree to keep yourself healthy? Yes. And alcohol, are you going to cut down or stop? Well, while trying, this is a trying to conceive bit, isn't yeah. it? Well, we just said cut down, didn't we? So, well, trying, trying to conceive, to conceive. Yeah. unless yeah. we have any problems. What would you do if there is a chromosomal ab abnormality? If the baby has mm. Down syndrome, yeah. everybody's happy that mm -hmm. the pregnancy mm -hmm. would continue yeah. and yeah. you would look after the child. Yes. That's fine. We were all of exactly the same um, opinion that it's about that baby and their quality of life, not your life. Yeah. You know, and I don't think I could be in a team of IPs that said, oh, I don't think we can handle that. So that was quite important for me. How many months are you going to try to conceive before you have a review? Well, we put we put down six. That's normally the standard. Yeah. Yeah. It might be worth if there is if there is if there is an issue after yeah. six months having a rethink. Yeah. 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 If IP one or IP two dies before the parental order is given, it is his her intention that the remaining intended parent be given custody of the child. Mm -hmm. Um, and Maddie, you intend to do everything that's required to confer full parental rights to um, Alex and Rich. All happy? All happy. <laughs> Alex and Rich are stuck with me as their surrogate now. Yay! <laughs> well done, guys. We've got a joint fantasy of that moment of discovering that we've made a baby, and we're letting ourselves imagine that a little bit now. Smile. Picturing getting that positive pregnancy test. Yeah, Yay! cheers. Yay! <laughs> hey, we've got a single man on the phone. He wants to make an embryo. What? A man? Single? Yeah, a single man wanting to make an embryo. No. Yes, he's on the phone. David has made embryos with his sperm and anonymous donor eggs. They are frozen and ready to be used if he can find a woman to carry his baby. I recognised the face, so I thought I'd follow him over. <laughs> How are you? Nice, nice, you? nice to meet you. After five months of searching for a surrogate, he met 29-year-old Lauren, and they decided to get to know each other better. This is when Lauren and I met up in London. That's her son. We got on really well. I connected with Lauren in a very unique way that I don't connect with anybody. But it wasn't enough. Lauren wants to wait a year because she wants her son to be a bit older before she undergoes pregnancy. It just didn't feel right. I didn't want to wait a year and then another nine months on top of that if we were successful first time. Why is a year a long time to wait? Because I've waited so long. I'm, I'm ready to go now. If I don't find a surrogate in the next year, I'll be kicking myself because if I'd stayed with Lauren, 
we could have we could have been starting on our pregnancy journey. So it's, I'm taking a big kind of risk and a leap of faith that I will find someone again. This is not David's first attempt at trying to become a dad. Three and a half years ago, he and a friend decided to co-parent. That's a very early scan. I can see a little blob area, that's the embryo and that's the womb. That was the first time I had ever created life, and I remember it just being, it just blowing me away. The next scan that we had, um, there was no heartbeat after that. I remember feeling numb for a bit because there was an element where I felt like a failure. It was I that abandoned it, not that it died, but that I, somehow I abandoned it or something, you know, because I couldn't make it live. It was just this awful mess of grief and sadness and despair, really, just like, this is it. I can't remember a time when I didn't entertain the idea of me being a dad. My whole life has been pointing to this. I have a very clear idea of what I need to do and I'm gonna do it. And if it means I'm an emotional wreck some days, I'll deal with that, I'll cope with that. Because I'm gonna have a kid and I'm gonna find the right person to help me. Maddie is a single mum to eight-year-old Dylan and six-year-old Lucas. They live on the outskirts of Bristol. We live in a housing cooperative. Living among lots of other people is difficult, but it's also really fun, and the kids love it. When I first came here to visit, the first thing I noticed was that they had like all the kids' shoes were all out together, and like all the kit, all the coats were all hanging up and stuff. So it felt like a like a real home rather than just like everybody's flats. I've come from a family. What's the word? Isn't like what's the opposite of a nuclear family? Like step parents and step brothers and half brothers and their siblings and their parents that aren't actually related to you, but they're part of your family. And like my, that's how I've grown up. I see what I'm helping Alex and Rich to do is probably create something I've never really known. They're married, they've been married a long time, even though it'll have two dads. They're bringing their child into a very conventional progression of a relationship. Do you remember why we're friends with Alex and Rich? Yes. What are we doing with them? You're helping them have a baby. Yeah. And why are we doing that? Um, because they want a baby, but, um, no one loves them all. They do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Life is very complicated. It is. Life is very complicated, isn't it? When you're an adult, do you get the meaning of your existence? Mm. No, not really. You have to find your own meaning, though. Today, Alex and Rich are making the 120-mile trip from Buckinghamshire to Bristol for their first home insemination with Maddie. Neither of us really minded who um, was going to be the biological father. We tossed a coin. <laughs> through, we got threw a pound coin, we threw it down the stairs and <laughs> called heads and tails and went down to look. <laughs> and, it, and it came out with, with Richard. Funnily enough, you don't use a kitchen turkey baster. Um, and that would be pretty tough to get it into and out of. <laughs> so you suck it into the syringe and then you chuck it up there. <laughs> uh, it's also advised that you induce an orgasm, because that can help. Yeah. So it's not all awkward. <laughs> you in your jammies. Hello. Mm -hmm. You watching your film? <laughs> What's this? 
Oh, it's just a syringe. What does it do? Well, it, um, it's just for like keeping special things in. Really? Yeah. And you could have it in the bath if you want. It's like a ba bath toy. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a gun. It is like a, it's like a water gun, isn't it? Right. Bye, fine. You gonna shut the door? Not be using that one then. <laughs> Do you guys want a glass of wine? Or... No wine for me, thanks. I'll have wine, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely have wine. I probably will. Don't give them to me now. You can go in the bathroom if you want, but it's a bit, like, not very comfortable. But you're welcome to use my bedroom. I really don't mind. OK. Oh, it's so personal. Just a shout, I guess, <laughs> when shout. you've come out. <laughs> Wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. All the kids are asleep, so no one's going to disturb you. Oh, are you sure you don't want to help? Oh, no, no. <laughs> He'll be fine. <laughs> are we ready? Yes. <laughs> Oh, God. Right, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on. <laughs> You're presenting yourself saying, I'm a fertile woman with a womb that can get pregnant. It is quite a lot of pressure. I've kind of promised that I can make them a baby. I now need to see it through and show that I can deliver that. Otherwise, it's wasting their time, isn't it? What? I can't wait to scare Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> he might not recognise me. Caitlin is now 17 weeks pregnant with her manager, Kate's baby. Kate and her partner, Matt, lost three pregnancies before turning to surrogacy. One of their losses was a stillbirth at 32 weeks. They were meant for our little boy that we were gonna have. We'd bought all of that because we were hoping we were going to need them. Um, the past couple of years have been either being pregnant or dealing with losing a baby. Um, and touch wood, things will be a little bit different this time. It's really difficult to trust somebody else with the most important thing in the world to you. You're trusting somebody to do the right things and sleeping on their side and, and having all the right foods, not having the things they're not meant to have. It's, it's a huge thing. You have to trust that your surrogate is not going to have a sneaky half a glass of wine. If you've chosen to be a surrogate, I don't feel like you're the type of person to then sit at home and do things that you know your intended parent wouldn't really want you to do, because that sort of goes against the whole thing of looking after someone's baby for them. Snack delivery. Thanks. There you go. Food for the pregnant lady. <laughs> So what's it like sitting next to your surrogate at work? I think it works quite well working together um, because it means that I don't have to check in on her or specifically go round and sort of invade her personal space by asking how she is and stuff because we get to see each other organically. I think it is unusual for a manager to have this relationship with a colleague, but then I like to think that it's never been like that. It's never been a question of Caitlin feeling for even a second she has to do it because I'm the office manager or anything. That would be awkward, wouldn't it? Do you need any more clothes? I'm modelling your jeans again today. Oh, are you? Yeah. 
And how does Jordan find maternity jeans? He's they so him? unfazed. Like, I've pulled them up, like, under my boobs and I'm like, look, sexy dresses. <laughs> and he's like, oh, this looks so comfortable. I still get in my own head way too much about how I look, but it's nice that he's just pretty constant. Mm-hmm. He'd look really bad as well if he wasn't, wouldn't he? I have said that to him. You can't leave me. Imagine how you'd look, like, walking you out on surrogate. You can't... You just can't do that, can you? Some kind of blackmail. I've never been around someone through pregnancy and I don't really know what to do. So I think she gets a little bit stressed out when I don't do things. Um, but then I don't know what to do and she doesn't like asking. So we're, it's hard, it's hard for, it's hard for both of us. I promised I'll, I'll try better. I keep trying. That's all I can do, isn't it? It's been two weeks since Maddie did a home insemination with Rich's sperm, and Alex and Rich are heading to Bristol to see if it has worked. We've got the opportunity to try and start a family thanks to Maddie. It's just the, the most exciting feeling to think that actually this is probably the start of us really going down that path. It'd be absolutely amazing for us to get pregnant and to go through that whole process from attending scans and seeing the, seeing the baby move in and feeling the baby kick, being there for the birth. I, I can't even put it in words. It'd be magical, it'd be so wonderful. I'm excited for them to do it. I'm prepared for it to be negative. I'm trying to be optimistic. It's a real hard balance. Do you think you are pregnant? I don't know. I really don't know. Here I <laughs> right, do you want us to do the deed that you're here to do? Well, you're going to be there with us. Well, you can do the dipping. You dip the end in for five seconds and then wait three minutes. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, and then just leave it and it'll do its funky thing. Are you going to come and look? Yeah, you can look, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what the other one says. There no. we go. It would have been nice for yeah. next month. We'll keep trying. Yeah, we'll keep trying, yeah. We'll just keep trying. Pain, isn't it? Really, um, it's not ideal, but it is. It is what it is. So it's fine. So obviously, I'll just wait, wait to get my period. It's been two months since David ended his relationship with Lauren and began a new search for a woman to carry his baby. I've met a new surrogate. Her name's Faye. Uh, really didn't see it coming at all. So, yeah, l looking forward to everything that's coming up, but um, nervous, nervous, because I really, I, I need this to happen. I need this to happen. Help! Boys! Help! Oh. Help! I made it! What would you like to eat? Goodies. I don't think we've got any goodies, babes. I think you've done all the goodies. Faye lives with her husband, Lee, and their sons, Finney and Eugene. She first met David online through a surrogacy organisation. First came across David when he wrote something about ringing fertility clinics and asking to make embryos and getting responses like, uh? And I said to Lee, my goodness, yes, of course. It never even occurred to me that a single man would equally want to be a parent. 
Help him out, Vinny. David and Faye are now in what's known as the get-to-know phase, in which they learn more about each other before deciding on whether to form a team. So we only met David briefly at the social. The kids were there and David handled it really well. He handled the kids really well. That was about it, really. What have you committed to each other so far? Officially, nothing, but emotionally, tons we've committed. <laughs> I'm wondering if when I see him, I might just burst into tears. I don't know, that would be weird. Hello. Hello. Good drive. Yeah, sorry I'm late. Oh my god. No, goodness. it's cool, it's all right, don't worry. Hello. Hi, you're right. <laughs> yes. Lovely scene. <laughs> Boy, Vinny, David's got you something. Oh, this is what yeah. Is it? Thank oh, you. Thank you very much, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> do you fancy That's having a play with question. it in the garden yeah. while we have a cup of tea? So, I have a question for you, actually. When you were first discussing this, how cognizant were you of being married to Faye and how, what would that mean legally for the child that Faye was carrying? Don't mind saying my initial reaction yeah, that's was, what more, I'm or was more or less, no. Yeah. You didn't but want that, to be the that... legal father of David's baby? Yeah. yeah. The whole point of the getting to know process is so there's the 120 million percent trust. Yeah. That I will never be in a position where I have to care for your baby. Never. Never. Like, you've spent many, many years, I assume, want wanting kids. Do you mind me saying this? That just makes me trust you more. You are kind of like my role models, you know? <laughs> like, I look at you and I think, like, I want to be like those guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, what in terms? What? In like, it's a what? kind of hero worship, I guess, because I respect what you're doing for me. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry, Faye. I didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> sorry. All right. <laughs> Just overwhelming, isn't it? Hey. Sorry. Sorry, I'm no. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm no, sorry. It's you know, part of the it's process, just... you know. Oh. Mm, thank you. You just say really nice things and it, I just can't take it. That's no, okay. You don't don't apologize. Uh, let me get some tissue. It's all good. It's cool. Yeah. 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 Yay! Well done. When Faye said she wanted to be a surrogate. My first reaction was like, whoa, what? I, I haven't even heard anybody talk about surrogacy, let alone somebody say they want to be a surrogate, let alone my wife say I want to be a surrogate. When the baby is born, the surrogate and the surrogate's husband go on the birth certificate until there's a parental order. I did have a problem about being on somebody else's birth certificate because that would have meant that I was legally responsible for that child. I felt like our family was getting into a rhythm and we were on a roll and everything was smooth. Why do we want to tip the balance? I think it would minimise the whole journey if there wasn't several contemplations, if there wasn't these sort of like well, well, let's think about this. It would minimise the journey. Do you want Faye to carry your child? Yes, absolutely, definitely, definitely. By like, getting energy off her, and not just Faye, but like her husband and the kids. I think they're on my wavelength about a lot of things. But I suppose ultimately, I can't quite believe someone's going to want to help me do this. Someone, a stranger that I don't know, is going to want to help me do this. Make it better. I'm sorry. What were you drinking? Wine. Just wine. So it smells wine. like paint stripper. Yeah. Oh, Caitlin is now 31 weeks pregnant. Being around drunk people is really annoying. I've been trying to work out this evening whether Jordan's more drunk than I've ever seen him before, or whether he just noticed way more things than the sober one. How is he finding? 
finding the pregnancy, do you think? I think... I don't know. Our sex life has massively changed. The amount we were having sex had dropped right off. I got quite upset one day and I said, well, you never initiate it anymore either. And, and he pointed out that I complain about physical symptoms a lot. Like I sit there and say, I've got piles or something. Like it doesn't really sound like I want him to come on to me. And he also pointed out that if I was very turned on by you right now, that would be strange too. It's like, it'd be uncomfortable if I was too into this. I was like, yeah, that is also very true. <laughs> The surrogacy thing was 100% my decision. You know, at the time I decided to do it, we hadn't even been in a relationship for a year. Like, I'd made up my mind that I was going to do it, and if he wasn't on board with it, then it probably would have been the relationship that ended rather than the surrogacy thing, because I just didn't feel like he had a vote at that point. Whereas now, it would have to be a 50-50 decision to ever do something like that again. Like, I feel like he's given so much in supporting me throughout it all. He's such a big part of the kids' lives now. He, you know, he's moved into the home. Like, it would have to be a family decision that we'd all have to be on board with and the impact for all of us. It's got eight chapters. Eight chapters, or well, maybe it can be two now, do you think? Nearly over. Two more months, and we're done. Mm -hmm. Why whoop whoop? Why? Because then I can have my Caitlin back. <laughs> yeah, so we got we got holidays planned and stuff. So it's kind of exciting as soon as she's stop being pregnant, and then we can resume our relationship. Do you feel like your relationship's on hold? No, not on hold, but it's you can't. There's only, there's only so many times you can just go out for a meal and not get drunk, I suppose. It's not as fun. Like, we, we haven't been together too long, so nearly, nearly the majority of our relationship is her being a surrogate. It's pretty strange, isn't it? What do you mean most? Spending nights out with each other, um, being able to lie close to her instead of Wherever, how far that much is away from here all the time. <laughs> yeah, how am I still smiling? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm crazy, I think. Or really, really understanding, or just too dumb to re recognise any other emotion. So, David, how are you feeling about today? Pumped, super excited. How do you feel? Whoa, yeah, I'm good. I feel good. Um, I feel excited. Um, Why am I the only one feeling a bit nervous then? No, I've, just I've, don't change I've... your mind. <laughs> <laughs> After three months of getting to know each other, David, Faye, and Lee have decided to officially become a surrogacy team. Even though my first reaction was a little bit negative, I came round, you know. I was able to think about it emotionally and not cynically. I was able to put my selfish needs to one side. Okay. It's her body and it's my role to support emotionally and practically. David is a deep and kind soul. He is so open, which I really, really value. Faye and I really, really value. Yay. Before David's embryo can be put into Faye's womb, she needs to have a scan. So what is this scan today for? So the scan is, to, is called like a dummy transfer. My understanding is that they um, are just checking Faye's womb to see that there is nothing abnormal or there's no problem with her being able to carry a child. A surrogate really needs to be able to carry a child for it to work. So it's... nothing is certain. We're so close. And so far. Could be the end of our journey today. 
if they find something in, in her womb, an abnormality, a growth, it, it could be the end of everything. Just really hoping it's, it's gonna go okay. For a gay man, I don't have access to female bodies, you know? That's not part of my experience. Okay, I think I'm ready. You sure she's all right? Me being yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. All right. Absolutely. Can you wriggle towards me a little bit? That's it. Thank you. Perfect. Society's view of women is that we are driven by our hormones and our emotions to be mums and they have no understanding that when hosting a pregnancy for someone else, your bond can be with that baby's parent and not the baby. So much more depth to it. A bit of movement and cold down below again. A lot of people have said to me that I'm a very emotional person, which is true, but I don't see that as a negative. Yeah, I think doing this comes down to wanting to prove to other people that I am strong enough to do this, I can do this. But I feel like it's also about the injustice of amazing people who want to be parents who can't. I want others to have what we've got. So everything went well, the dummy and re transfer went well, so we can give you um, a definite um, sort of uh, okay to the procedure. To go ahead, so, oh, yeah. that's great. Hey. Um, so from my point of view, definitely. Good. Um, so the cool. It hits you like a, a ten-ton truck. This is it. Just to suddenly feel like everyone's there for me. This is like just overwhelming this gratitude and just so in awe of Faye. Cheers. 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 I couldn't tell if you were in pain or uncomfortable. It's just bracing myself. It's just weird. It was just a big fanny in the middle yeah. of the room. It was just like... <laughs> big fanny. <laughs> I had no idea what I was looking at. I had no idea what this compared like to other wounds, but I thought that's where I want my baby to grow. Yeah. Can you do me a really big favour? Yeah. Can you go and get me some tissue, please, so I can blow my nose? Just some toilet roll will do. Thank you. Caitlin is now 39 weeks pregnant, and her relationship with Jordan has suddenly ended. He said that the relationship wasn't necessarily the right fit for him at the right time. And wasn't going to work. And within two days of that, he'd moved out, and that was that. The fact that the relationship ended is still, like, hard to believe almost in a way for me, because for me, there wasn't anything wrong with it. So, um, and so much of what I was looking forward to of the end of the surrogacy was all the plans we had for the future together and doing stuff, so... Just... Yeah, it's just taking the shine off of it all. <laughs> he swears blind that it's not the surrogacy, that that's not the problem, um, which I do want to believe, because I do think he's, like, a good person. I don't think he was that, like, put off by it. Um, but I have to think that maybe it's just, like, magnified the situation or sped it along a bit. If that was the reason why the relationship ended, then it was not a good relationship. I told Kate straight away, um, like, when Jordan ended things, and she's been really supportive, um, which I think is probably difficult for her, because I think she's conflicted between wanting to be, like, a good friend and be supportive and also probably the voice in her head screaming, like, how is this affecting her baby? Like, are you eating? Are you sleeping? Like, are you coping with this? There's quite a lot of putting a brave face on. <laughs> Knowing that the surrogate who has carried our baby so well and with so much love and so much care up until now is absolutely breaking into pieces is really hard. Stress is very, very dangerous in a pregnancy. To suddenly have somebody who's 
potentially their blood pressure is going to be all over the place, they're not resting, they're not eating. Um, it couldn't possibly be any worse for the baby. There is limited maternity care in Alderney, so Kate has flown Caitlin to the neighbouring island of Guernsey to ensure the safety of the baby. We're having the scan because we're very, very worried about Caitlin and I need to know that the baby's OK to be able to be there properly for her. Pop up, let's have a look, first of all. When you've had a stillborn baby, it doesn't matter if you're carrying the next one or somebody else is carrying the next one. You relive everything that's happened. The amount of times I've been to a scan and seen the sonographer's face just drop, um, I don't think those are nightmares that I'm ever going to be able to shake anytime soon. The baby's a little bit bigger than average, but completely normal. In terms of stillbirth risk, the chances of stillbirth do increase, and the further you go, the risk is more. But, you know, we can understand anxiety. So what's your feeling? I mean, I, I think I would start feeling really, really nervous if we were getting towards 40 weeks. I mean, is it? Is it worth discussing doing a sweep? We can do a sweep. It's just a vaginal examination, except you actually deliberately stretch the cervix. I mean, the other disadvantage is obviously a bit uncomfortable. Um, you can get a little bit of spotting. And I feel um, really bad. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's do that, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> it's not me that has to do it. Um, um, well, maybe if we could do that and have a, have a come and see you again in a couple of days or yeah. something, then are you happy with that? Yeah? The sweep itself requires us to enter the cervix and sweep between the membranes and the cervix itself. It can be a little bit uncomfortable, um, but let me know. OK. I'm just going to put a bit of pressure against the cervix and just see if it'll give. I think Caitlin is doing this because she's an amazing person. You know, she's putting everything on the line just to make sure that we get the same happiness she's got. Yeah. The quicker this baby is out in the world, and I know they're both OK, the better. I really hope she's able to somehow dig deep and get through this last little bit. Yeah, yeah. Maddie and her girlfriend Amber are staying with Alex and Rich for the weekend. They've been trying unsuccessfully to make a baby for three months and have invited some friends over from their surrogacy organisation for support. Maddie's here with, uh, with Amber and, and the boys and we've got Ben and Luke coming with their little girl, Autumn, and Emily, Ben and Luke's surrogate. Hello. You all right? Yeah, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Good. Hello. How are you doing? Ah, I'm very good, thank you. How long did it take them to get? They got pregnant the first month, which is a pretty, uh, pretty good going. But yeah, it is what it is, and we've always gone in with this, knowing that that was, that's the way these things are. It'll take however long it takes. It's still very early days, and it's not something that we need to be worrying about at this stage. You change your bottom. Oof. We got pregnant first time, didn't we, Dolly? We got pregnant with you. Nine months later, this little tinker came out. Didn't yeah. Ah! Yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Maddie, before before I forget, oh yeah, I bought those. Is this yeah. super duper ones. They're the ones I used. Okay. Cool. Thanks. So I just figured let's give that a go. Yeah. So how's everything with you? Yeah, it's all right. It's just frustrating. I'm just so impatient. <laughs> and I just assumed it would all work straight away. And it hasn't. I just assumed it would work straight I away. I feel pregnant really easily. I just never thought about it not happening. No. I'm just not a little bit too fertile, <sighs> so... I'm just a bit, like, bored of waiting now. 
And it's hard not to feel like it's never going to happen. It's hard to now feel hopeful and not to protect yourself. It is like a lot of conflict. You need to be quite strong, because that process and going round and round and round is quite... It is quite conflicted and it does... It is quite stressful. Yeah, he's perfect. Never actually imagined this would happen. It's the outcome that we all dreamed about. A week after arriving in Guernsey, Caitlin has given birth to a baby boy, who Kate and Matt have called Joey. So he was born about 11 o'clock last night. Basically two hours of pushing and he shot out into the world. I was trying to not look like I was in pain or struggling. Like, Kate had quite a good face on her, but Matt looked so very worried sometimes. Um, and actually, I think when I opted for the pain relief, they both looked as relieved as I did. So maybe I wasn't hiding it very well. She was amazing. She made it look sort of almost effortless, you know? It clearly wasn't. She was clearly in absolute agony, but... She couldn't have made the whole process any easier for us. The midwife handed him to me, this funny, tiny little thing, and I was so surprised and shocked, and she just handed him to me, and he peed all over me, and she was like, there you go, he knows you're his mum. Caitlin will never, ever, ever in a million years understand what she's done for us. The years of heartbreak and emptiness, to be able to take all of that away with what she's done is, is amazing. And I never felt like I would be able to feel like myself again, but I do. I feel like myself, but better, because now, no matter what, like, there's this little person who just makes me really happy. When he was born last night, I immediately just felt like physical relief. There was none of the rush of feeling for the baby, or it was like, oh, it was a really nice scene, seeing the three of them together. Came back here and slept like an absolute log. Yay! Exciting. Mummy, yeah. Tummy party. Was there lots of food at the tummy party? Yeah. Yeah? And there's loads of wine at the tummy party. Loads of wine. Mummy can drink some wine now. <gasps> as soon as we get home. As soon as we get home. It's definitely put things into perspective a lot. Obviously, I'm still going to be sad that like the relationship with Jordan ended, but it just doesn't seem like the end of the world anymore. Like it seems like what we've done here is so much bigger. I feel like quite cool this morning. I feel strongly independent and like I could do anything really. It's not my baby. Where were the mom and dad? And they were looking at me like I was on drugs. I look at couples and I think, what are you going to give me? I want Jamie's baby right now. <laughs> the oracle of the future. There's no messing around now. I have to trust her. You build such a strong bond with someone, but sometimes you have to just say, this isn't meant to be. <laughs> Couple out, because there's no going back, is there? Find out more about the world of surrogacy and listen to an Open University podcast exploring prenatal testing and surrogacy. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash surrogates and follow the links to the Open University.